Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the Open Tunes News. Now, I've been receiving feedback about these news videos, and some people have been expecting that all of the features that I mention in this series will be in the next version of the program. So, I guess that the intro to the videos in this series should also have a disclaimer that also states that the following is discussing an open source piece of software which provides 100% freedom to the developers. So if the developers don't want to work on something, can't work on something, or feel that they should be paid to develop a new feature or something, and won't develop it until they do get paid, then that is their right as an open source developer. Although my Open Tunes news videos tend to be exciting because you're able to see what the developers are working on and ideas that are being bounced around, please keep in mind that all the things posted on Bounty Source will probably not be added into Open Tunes, unless, of course, people are willing to donate to the feature. So if you're super excited about a feature that I discuss in this series and you don't donate and you're disappointed that it's not in the next version of the program, then keep in mind that the software is free and nothing shows motivation better than donating to the feature that you want because that money goes to the developer on Bounty Source and helps to get the feature that you're super excited about. It's a free piece of software and you have the power to somewhat govern some of its development so the next version of the program can have some of exactly what you want. Keep in mind that I personally spent somewhere close to $500 on OpenTunes development for a feature that we will be getting. Also, although it seems like I'm the customer service guy for OpenTunes, I don't get paid to do any of it. Please don't send me angry emails about Open Tunes if you have no involvement in the Open Tunes development process. If you want to have a say and possibly even be angry, then you can either help with the development process by programming in things into the program, by learning how to program, how to code, or you can donate to the feature that you want on Bounty Source. I guess there's also a third option where if you're experiencing serious technical problems with the software and you get in touch with me, I could get you in contact with the right people in order for you to basically be a play tester where you try out a bunch of experimental builds of open tunes in order to help the development process move along and the bug fixing process. The developers need those, especially if you're experiencing technical issues. But I will not get you in contact with them if I feel like you're a hothead and you're going to offend them. I have a professional, polite, respectful relationship with these people. Now, in my last Open Tunes news video, I discussed the story test tween command and in between pop a bounty in bounty source. This was a previous story of mine. Now there are some benefits to this specific story. It's an additional feature which will help save time in the in-betweening process, similar to what's seen in Kakani's auto in-between process. This will help us see instant results in our in-betweening process while using the X sheet and possibly even adjust the spacing with better controls where that's concerned. Please keep in mind that I said possibly because I've never actually used Kakani, but what has been discussed with me has been interesting. The person who created this bounty reached out to me and got me sold on this bounty, so I've donated something like $200 into it. I don't plan on being the only person donating towards it, but I will periodically donate to it from time to time in smaller amounts from here on out. Once you see a bounty reach a point to where it's reached $200, there's a high likelihood that the feature will be added into Open Tunes because people have shown an interest in having it. This this feature has reached that benchmark. 
So if you'd like to check the story out, feel free to click on the link in the video description below titled Test Tween Command and In Between Pop-Up in the video description below. And if you're interested in delivering a donation to this feature, it'd be greatly appreciated. The Marevna Project has shown some interest in this bounty by participating in the conversation. Currently, the two backers for this project is Open Anim and I. Next in the news is the function editor display options. This will allow us to switch between the function editor's spreadsheet and graph without a pop-up window. Here, let me show you what I mean. Let's go into the animation tab in OpenTunes. Let's also look at the schematic. In the lower right-hand corner of the schematic window, we see this very specific icon that, when clicked, we flip from the stage schematic to the effect schematic, all in the same window. However, if we click on the identical icon located in the function editor, instead of it flipping from the spreadsheet to the graph, like it does with the stage schematic and the effects schematic, we get this pop-up window. Basically, what this GitHub story is going to do is make the function editor work a little bit more like the schematic in that it'll just flip between the graph and the spreadsheet. This is a welcome addition into OpenTunes in my opinion. A link to the story will be supplied in the video description below. Next in the news is how the plastic tool creates black contours. Now if I understand this correctly, oftentimes you're able to mat out specific style colors while using the effect schematic. And what happens when you do that with the plastic tool also associated with all of this is it makes a very subtle line. And the only thing that I can think of in order to combat this is using the cut tool on your vector work and assigning a zero color to the lines that you're wanting to have matte out. But that's more work for something that the effect schematic should be able to do anyways and that the plastic tool shouldn't be ruining from the effect schematic. Furthermore, I've actually experienced this exact same thing just with the effect schematic in and of itself, just that alone without the plastic tool being associated with it. Even SnapEye has been experiencing problems with this issue, and in my opinion, SnapEye is the foremost authority on OpenTunes' cutout animations. And I hate to see people working with cutout animations and having to work with lesser quality because they just happen to be using a different style of animation. It'd really be nice to get this issue resolved. Is that this story is actually a, a little bit older than some of the ones that I've been reporting. If you'd like to check out this story, feel free to do so by looking in the video description below. Now the next story comes from the Marevna Project. They state that dragging from the level strip to the horizontal timeline, the wrong cell is highlighted. Here, let me show you. It's actually not just that the wrong cell is highlighted though. Uh, it just looks really wonky when you drag levels from the level strip to the timeline. Here, I select all of my levels on the level strip and then I drag them into the timeline and instead of seeing a horizontal visual highlight, we see this weird vertical highlighter. and. As Constantine does point out, it's highlighting the wrong cell. And I completely agree. This needs to be fixed because having weird interface elements like this just serves to confuse the crap out of people. If you would like to check this story out, feel free to click in the link in the video description below. The next story deals with the edit tool. Specifically, the title of the story is oddly labeled Edit Tool, Edit Mode, Bring Back the Manipulator Widget from Harley Quinn. This is really cool, actually. Although OpenTunes and Tunes had a 90% similarity when OpenTunes first launched, the edit tool on Tunes is pretty different from the animate tool in OpenTunes. Currently, in OpenTunes, if I'm using the animate tool, anytime I need to transition from doing a rotation to a scale to a shear, or what have you, I have to bring my mouse all the way up to the upper left corner of the screen in order to access a drop down menu and change the next function of the animate tool and see what it can do. This is slow, tedious, and monotonous. But the animate tool's center is differently designed on the viewer. It has a top spoke that when clicked and dragged about, it'll rotate the level. In order to pivot 
the level, you just click and drag from the actual center of the center. The right spoke on the center will shear the level if you click and drag on it. In order to use uniform scaling, you'd click and drag on the left spoke on the center. So this would bring us features that we'd already have, but it actually reduced the tedious, irritating monotony of having to move our mouse to a drop-down menu every single time that we want to interact with the Animate tool. I've said this before, but I really mean it. Any time that you read through a drop-down list in order to interact with the interface, it slows down the workflow, and thus you wind up working slower it slows you down i don't know about you guys but every time i see a drop down list with more than three or four things listed in it my eyes glaze over and i oftentimes have to force myself to read each and every single thing on that drop down list and like i said it slows you down now, fortunately, this bounty has a very high probability of being added into Open Tunes, given that it's already received $200 worth of funding. Now, I understand that in the recorded video footage it says $175 has been donated, but the day after I recorded the video footage, it got a donation of $200 total. Currently, there are three backers for this project. Adam Earl, who is a professional animator, Hulu Mel, who's an animator I highly respect and has their own YouTube channel. I'm not quite sure if Hulu Mel is actually a professional animator or not, but probably should be. And then there's Matit Animata, who's also been showing financial support for this bounty. Matit Animata is also known as Franco Bianco, who has his own animation studio, and who migrated from Toons to Open Toons. So this feature is getting attention and donations from some high Highly respected people in the Open Tunes community. Again, you only see two backers on the video footage, but this video footage is a little bit out of date, and I do apologize for that. For all three of these people to show support for this project is really saying something. If you'd like to see this added into Open Tunes, feel free to click on the link with the title Edit Tool, Edit Mode, Bring Back the Manipulator Widget from Harley Quinn in the video description description below and if you'd like to donate feel free to provide a donation right here otherwise if no one else is willing to donate to this project there's a high likelihood that we'll never see this feature added into open tunes and that would be really unfortunate now for the next story, it appears as though those that are using Mac OS X and using Linux distributions are experiencing the same issue where the brush stroke gets interrupted. They wind up having the lines disappear or something along those lines. But specifically, there's one complaint about this that says that whenever there's some sort of autosave, your brush stroke gets interrupted. Personally, if that's all that there is to this, I don't see that there's any sort of major problem here because no matter what happens, when there's an autosave, I just expect that I'm going to redraw the last line. But for those that are experiencing this issue regardless of an autosave, I hope this issue can get resolved as fast as possible for you. A link to the story will be supplied in the video description below. And this is actually a running theme with this OpenTunes news video. Lots of problems with Mac OS X and Linux. The next story is on how the raster brush is offset on Mac OS X, where the cursor for the stylus is located at a different location from where the lines are actually appearing. This looks really annoying, and this looks like a major issue for Mac OS X users. Hopefully, we'll be able to see this get resolved as soon as possible. I would consider this to be a workflow-breaking glitch. A link to this story will be supplied in the video description below. The next story is on how there's no audio scrubbing for some Linux distributions, specifically Fedora. They're able to import their WAV files, but they're unable to hear the audio. It's really unfortunate that both Linux and Mac are both having so many difficulties with open tunes. A link to the story will be supplied in the video description below. The next story is another example of the issues that Linux users are having with open tunes, specifically Ubuntu 16.10. Open tunes crashes when playing audio in the level column. Keep in mind that Ubuntu is the most commonly adopted Linux distribution for those transitioning from Mac OS X and Windows, so this is a very popular distribution of Linux. It sounds as though 
though multiple different audio files have been attempted to be used, and yet the interaction between Ubuntu and OpenTune somehow crashes OpenTunes every time, regardless of what type of audio file is being used. The comments in this issue are other people confirming the same problem, only that some people are reporting that it also exists with Mac OS X, and also another person confirming that this problem also exists with the same distribution of Ubuntu. So this is a reproducible bug on two different platforms. Hopefully this can serve as a baseline for a developer to help resolve the issue. A link to the story will be supplied in the video description below. As for the next story, it's something that I'd personally like to see added into OpenTunes. So with OpenTunes 1.2.0, we've been granted the ability to activate the feature that allows us to use the X sheet as the animation sheet. The problem with this is that if you select something like frame 74 and then draw an image on it, and then select frame 80 and draw something on it, you can do so without creating multiple level strips which is awesome but it winds up exposing frame 74 for six frames or so this is something that i personally also find to be a bit frustrating it's irritating and what this particular pull request on github is requesting is a little checkbox that you can click in the preferences so that you can choose if you want to auto stretch the frame. Now I also left a comment that bemoans an issue that also relates to using the X sheet as an animation sheet. Hopefully that can get resolved as well. Here, let me show you what I'm having a problem with. Okay, look at this. I select the red style and I click on a different frame and it automatically changes the style to the first black style in my level palette. So now I select the red style once again, select a different frame and complete Completely unpredictably, it just decides to draw a red line. Well, okay, well that's what I wanted, but what was wrong with the process the first time? So I select a distant frame and draw a line, and it switched back to the first black style again. This is extremely frustrating. I feel as though OpenTune should be able to remember my last clicked style for the column that I have selected. So suppose I have two columns. If I have column one selected, OpenTune should remember the last level and style that I had selected for that column. If I'm on column two, it should remember the specific column and style I had selected. This unpredictability in the program adds work for the end user and slows down the workflow. A link to this story will be supplied in the video description below. For the next story, there's a question stating, did a recent change slow down OpenTunes? There's a number of people here commenting on this issue stating that yes, there is indeed some severe input lag with 1.2.0. This resulted with uh, Turtletooth releasing a version of OTX, uh, still titled 1.2.0, that rolled back the Q OpenGL updates. And as a result, it resembles the performance that we were able to see in version 1.1.3. Now, although 1.2.0.2 Marevna Edition did indeed release a short while ago, I'm unsure if the Q OpenGL has been improved or rolled back in that version. But personally, in my personal experience, I haven't seen any major differences, to be honest. For the final story of the day, we have an animation made by SnapEye. Now, I'm not going to include the audio or anything like that. If you want to actually appreciate the animation, you're going to have to click on the link in the video description below and actually see it on his channel. Look at how I'm zooming in on the rig here, and we can actually see yet again uh, the outlines that are created by the plastic tool, that bug that I mentioned earlier. Although these outlines are interesting to see so that we can actually see the anatomy of the cutout animation rig and see how it's made and and how the animator kind of sort of interacts with it. Most animators, however, just don't really want these sorts of things to appear in their final product. Now, the letters WIP are on the screen, showing us that this is still a work in progress, but look at the flame on the candle. The movement of the pony is really cool. The lip syncing uh, with the audio tends to be pretty spot on. The effects with various objects that appear 
and disappear just look phenomenal this is a quality piece of animation and generally anything made by snap eye is something that i tend to be impressed with uh, and thank you for joining me ladies and gentlemen if you guys enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe and if you didn't like it please like share and subscribe anyways i put a lot of effort into these videos and if you'd like to check out any of my other videos feel free to click on any of them appearing on the screen right now thank you very much for your time